I don't know, I see some people waiting. Wanted to come on a little bit early, say hi to everybody, get everybody a chance to come in. So we've got Marjorie Barnes is here, Sparkles here, Sharon McCabe is here. Uh, we've got about five minutes. So how's the weather there? How's you guys doing for Easter? Are there grandkids in the house? What are you guys up to right now for this weekend? Everybody's just saying good morning to each other. I know it's Saturday. I just, <laughs> I still fantasize about making Easter eggs like I used to. This, this, it was always Saturday night before Easter when we made the eggs. So, uh, oh yeah, well, finally it's going to let me skip the, the ads and actually come on and see you guys. All right, so I know I'm on four minutes early. My name is Leslie Onstead. I'm the creator of Color Art Products. I'm your host of Color Play Live three days a week. I'm here Tuesdays and Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and on Saturdays at 9 a.m. And Cindy Brenz just joined us. So, uh, yeah, it's been kind of a busy, very busy last 24 hours. I didn't finish all the gift cards. I admit I went back to my chair and just flopped after yesterday's pieces. They turned out beautiful. I'm gonna show you guys in a minute. The big one's still a little bit moist in the middle, but I think the smaller one turned out okay. Uh, but uh, we announced the set number three of the Purely Pigments, and I promised you guys a sneak peek of some of the colors that are heading to the lab on Tuesday to start production. Uh, we are doing a uh, Pre-event giveaway is normal for people that pre-order. Uh, there's always a gift on a pre-order event, but for our club members, there's going to be an extra, extra special gift that's in there for the club members. Thanking them for becoming founding members where we're going through this whole thing to retrofit the warehouse and get ready to do the watercolors. So, uh, Karen is just came in and Gretchen is here and everybody's just coming in. I know that we're just kind of getting to the gist of it. I, I'm going to do a few more swipes today and then hopefully on maybe Tuesday. Well, actually, I need to do it before Tuesday's live. I want to get them resin because we've got uh, three from the time before we got the two we did yesterday and if I do three today I think that makes nine I'm gonna resin um, D Lee reached out to me and she wanted to buy one of my pieces so I figured I would do a couple more yeah the membership uh, who said that's exciting Karen Stone said that's very exciting the membership is exciting I think uh, we've you know years ago there was a membership club for scrapbookers it was called Club Scrap now, this is before YouTube. This is way before Facebook. And uh, it was a club. They put out a, a single fold-over page mailer that went with all kinds of cool stuff in a box. It had a featured paper of the month, some colors of the month, uh, uh, projects on the project sheet, how to use it. And what was crazy, that's at the time when we were just using email groups because Facebook hadn't come about yet. And uh, as the packages made around the world, no, you won't, sweetheart. Hey, Sally, I'm not going to mail you guys physical cards. I don't have physical cards. By the time they got it to you in the mail, you'll use them. <laughs> They're like a gift card. You can just jump in. I want to join looking what card I want to get. Yeah, you have till April 5th. You do. We uh, had a lot of people say that, hey, we, you know, our budget's done for March. Can we wait till April? I want to give a gift card for my mom or for my daughter. I still need one for me. Absolutely. April 5th. But the club thing, what was so cool is when these packages went around the world, people were posting on this. Uh, it's, again, it's not Facebook. It was like regular just there were there were groups you could go log into like there was one called gingerwood and i know i'm aging myself here but this is like 25 28 years ago and as the boxes were making it around the world 
people were posting, spoiler alert, if you don't want to see what I did or know what's in the box, don't read this. People were so excited to get their gift boxes. Well, now, you know, freight with the way it is, it's better to kind of offer a club that gives you special perks. It's a sampling program. So when you check out, there'll be a little box that says, hi, I'm an Art Club member. Send me my weekly sample with my order. Whatever the sample of the week deal is, is going on. You guys will get it in your box. Uh, you get discounts. Yes, that's the beautiful thing. You, a founding member. Okay, let's see what happens in May. Let's say we get to May and the founding drive is over. Someone come, come in, spend $24.99, that's the number I'm thinking about, and they become a member, and then the software tracks their purchases, and they go up, they start at tier one, they make a tier two, tier three, if there's a tier four, you know, there'll be so many purchases, get them up there. We'll have some kind of offer, some kind of gift card that they can, uh -oh, we have an argument with the cats in the background. That's never happened during a video. Obviously, she doesn't like what Harley's doing. Jasmine is pissed at Harley. I can tell by the sounds of their voices. Anyway, sorry for the distraction. So, uh, uh, now we'll offer some kind of thing where, you know, buy this gift card, spend 300 bucks, but it might be a 25% off. We're never going to offer 40 to 50% off. This is crazy what we're doing we're literally refining everything so we can retrofit the warehouse. And then, of course, I have to move. The rent tripled. I don't know if anybody's ever heard the whole story. But uh, so what will happen is uh, someone will have an opportunity to buy some kind of card. They're not going to get nearly the discount they're getting now. But they'll have an opportunity to buy their way into the tier faster if they want to. Or they can just wait until uh, they're purchases earn them up into tier two, tier three, tier four. I'm wondering if we need a tier four. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to kind of three right now. So founding members are gonna get everything. The deepest discounts, you're gonna get be a part of the sampling program. Uh, when I do some kind of private live tutorial, you'll be invited. Uh, I'm even thinking about one Zoom class for the people that want to join. Maybe we do a couple different Zooms for different groups, but some kind of free Zoom class that the members can take advantage of. Um, if you have any ideas for great perks, that's fine. We're also, that we would love to hear, not just that's fine, we would love to hear your ideas. Now, as far as affiliate goes, here's the thing. The daily code on the website's going to go away. You're not going to see a 20% off like you see right now there's a code up there for 20 percent off i think it's color of my art 20. that's gonna go away probably in the middle of april and from that point on you might see five percent you might see ten percent the affiliate codes theirs theirs are going to drop too okay to probably ten but that actually gives us more money to pay our affiliates because, and they're also earning more because their percentages is based on what you spent. So if you get a 20% code by them, they're earning less than if they're using a 10% code. You'll find some months we're going to do a, an affiliate month where I'll give you a code that pairs with any affiliate code, combine them, and you get a special discount. But that means you got to go support one of our affiliates because we want to make sure that they're participating too. So, uh, as far as the new set, I guess I think I started to touch on this. Uh, the pre-order event on set three purely pigments. I'm doing this now because if we wait until after I move, you might not see set three till May or June. And normally I don't do them this close to one another, but I'd rather knock it out when I'm, I've got my lab table here to set up and do this because I, I have to move my whole house here. My landlady wants me out after 18 years and so I'm being forced to move next month. So I'm gonna, I've done this set early. Um, I thought I was gonna mix up some more autumn leaf but we can do that when we got the camera flipped over. I might as well get right to it. As long as we got everybody in here, Audra's here, it is 12.05. We got Cindy, Karen, Andrea Shirley, no, no physical cards. There's no reason to. 
Um, even thought not be able to be here for a bit, but I put my color swatch cards with all my... <laughs> Good for you. Sandy Sanders does the same thing. I'm terrible too. I've got to remember to do cards. Okay, so um, these are going to surprise you. I promised you guys some sneak peeks, but the Purely Pigments So Hard have been... Thank you, Sharon. By the way, D. Lee wants to buy one of them. And so I'm... Uh, Sharon McCabe says she loves yesterday's project. Dee Lee messaged me. She wants to buy one, which I'm so honored. <laughs> the last time I sold a piece, it was when I had something hanging in a Chris Sorensen studio. I've not normally get uh, uh, offers to buy my artwork, which, you know, a lot of people have said, if you're going to move some of this art on the walls, you should probably just uh, auction off less to move more to put in, more room on your walls to put new art up. That's a good point. Okay, so let's get to I, something I want to feature that I got ready here, the new colors. Now, these are going to surprise you because so far the Purely Pigments have been, you know, real, real dark, you know, like your perfect peacock looks black. Yeah, thank you, Andrea. Yeah, the maybe I don't know. You, it depends on what what new products you're getting into. Karen says she thinks her gift card's going to last so long. We'll see. Anyway, where I was going with this, this for uh, first round of purely pigments has always been super super saturated. You know your perfect peacock, which is your dark fella green, looked black in the bottle. I'm looking at some of the others that look very, very dark in the bottle, like the hickory leaf looks black. And by the way, we, we found out it's a gorgeous eucalyptus green, like a foggy green. But these, I think, are going to surprise you because it's Easter tomorrow. So without further ado, drum roll. They don't even have the names yet. I've put them up on there as a, that we're going to have a bright blue, a pale lap, a pale periwinkle, a cobalt teal, but it can't be called cobalt teal, so we have, so these are fresh off of my lab table. This is a really, 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 really bright spring pink, uh, yet to be named. I think in the set it just says bright pink. Okay. Here is, uh, how do we come up names? You know, that's funny. I'm usually the one that names them. I look up fruit, flowers, gemstones, animals. That's interesting you say that. Did you know there really is a thing called a glass wing butterfly? Funny, you'd, I just had to say this. So when we made our bling -it set called the glass wing butterfly, I said, how could I come up with a really great name for a set that emulates transparency, but sparkle and go look it up on Pinterest, go look it up on the internet. There's actually a butterfly called the glasswing butterfly. It comes from the Amazon area, I believe. And the wings are transparent, but they're iridescent. They're fabulous, okay, <laughs> yeah. Perfect poppy for what? I already have, well, I already have a poppy in our line and it's a bright red. Uh, I think this might be too hot. This reminds me of Gerber Daisy Pink, to be honest. You know, uh, I know that I can't use all the formal color names because we put the, that we put them in the Vivid Intense line. So like Hansa Yellow, I can't have two Hansa Yellow. So the Hansa Yellow of the Purely Pigments is the Mellow Yellow, right? Where we actually have a Hansa Yellow light in the Vivid Intense. But this looks like a poppy. I've not seen a poppy that's this bright pink. But maybe where you're at, but the Gerber Daisies or those um, what Cosmos, even though we have a color called Cosmos. Um, I was speaking to uh, Kathleen McGee. And I asked her what color she'd like to see. And she says, I've already run out of my vivid, intense cobalt aqua. Can you please? Oh, Bad Bunny art. We have someone new in here. 
Ding, ding, ding. You know what? Barbie Pink is not a bad name, even though I could get in trouble with using the name Barbie because now it's, you know, the movie. But uh, uh, Psychedelic Pink, that's a great name. Anyway, Kathleen McGee said, this is her favorite color in the Vivid Intense. She's run out of it already. I said, well, then, you know what? I need to make one in the Purely Pigments. She's going to make a whole lot of color with this. And then, uh, I mean, it's spring. Come on, we're talking Easter eggs. So we got a Barbalicious. Guys, somebody write that down. Now, what's interesting is we had a color. Um, it was another pink. We had an employees, they were in my, this, is a year, this had to be about 25 years ago, sitting in my living room. And we were trying to name this pink. Ended up being called Cherry Blossom. Hey, Pam. But uh, uh, someone said Bazooka. And I said, I nixed it. I said, that's the name of a gun. You know, it's also a trademark name for a bubble gum. Um, I forget. Petticoat pink, ballerina pink. I think we ended up calling it cherry blossom. So some of them, I uh, <laughs> I should do a contest. Oh, that's a good idea. What, you mean put a color up and have a contest to name it? You know, Furry Art Mother suggested that I do a custom color for somebody, but that's kind of pricey to make only one color for one person, but yeah. I don't know if this is, there's a blue flower in Texas that Miss Judy keeps talking about all the time. I don't know if we could call this bluebell or if this actually looks, looks like a bluebird. This looks like bluebird blue, like you always see in those spring things. And then last but not least, it is a shade darker than the color in the Vivid Intense. So when I made this vivid intense color god the light is so bright you can't see it uh this vivid intense color oh shazam blue bonnet blue j blue as shazam's a great name so i've always been in love with the whole blind light blue which to me is a periwinkle right a really pretty periwinkle so i wanted to be able to put that in this collection and we have. So it's going to look a couple shades darker than what you see in that Vivid Intense bottle. But remember, this still has to be mixed in something. Whether I put it in varnish, I put it in acrylic, I put it in resin, the color is going to lighten up and lift up a bit. So uh, I've got these four that we get to play with today. I'm going to show you what they look like. If I can't, I have too many gloves on already. I put two sets of gloves on and my camera's not letting me turn over. So, uh, Bubblish is not a bad name. Blue Bonnet, Blue J Blue. Yeah, this reminds me of that, the Bluebirds. You're right, Shazam does not tell the color. Bubblicious does, but is not also a gun. You love this blue? Andrea, is this the blue that you like? Oh, you love the Titan blue. Yeah, well, let me tell you, I am so happy. Now, my bottles don't even have uh, any of the labels on because these are just my lab sample bottles. So anyway, we'll be fooling around with these. Um, I am going to revisit those swipe spins. I'm going to do, I have boards to do possibly three today, if you guys will bear with me. I'm going to have to make a whole bunch of the interference up because it's been working, filling up the board with interference. I love the combination with the autumn leaf, but I do know how beautiful this autumn leaf looks with turquoises and purples and oranges. So uh, instead of using pinks today, I'm going to use a couple of these colors in it, let's hope. And if Princess Jasmima Mommy is in here, we have a new member. Who's our new member that someone just came in and joined us? What, you like this blue, Andrea? You like this uh, periwinkle blue? The blue jay blue? We really need a... Oh, Bad Bunny! Yes, Diane. Now, your name I recognize. 
Diane Hidg. I'm going to pronounce it wrong, but I recognize your last name. So either I've seen you on YouTube, seen you on a Facebook page, or you've ordered from us before. So glad you could join us. I'm thrilled to have people here. Uh, it's up right now, Cindy. The pre-order started yesterday. I sent out the email campaign this morning. That's one thing I was busy with this morning. So you guys can get in line. Like I said, we ran out. We had to order all kinds of more stuff to get them all done. So, And then also, again, I don't want you waiting till May. Now, other colors that I'm planning on. It's up on the website, but I kind of want to give you a little description. So we need a paint gray. And Dipsy, for, Dipsy Daisy is a great name for yellow. That's a great name for a yellow sparkle. Fairy Art Mother would probably like that one, huh? Fairy Art Mother, Dipsy Daisy. She loves coming up with fun names. So anyway, uh, right after the Purely Pigments launched, I did get asked about uh, doing a paint gray, which I, how to make one, and I can walk you through basics with what you have, but it would be easier if I made a Payne's Gray for you. Hey, John, glad you could join us, honey. Uh, uh, we desperately need Mars Violet, and I don't know if any of you know what that is. It's very much a uh, artsy color. It's kind of a ready, bricky, uh, has a lot of uh, red oxide in it, but it also has a red violet, and Mars Violet is like so beautiful, used in so many fine art projects. It could be mixed in to any kind of other colors you want. Uh, like I said, if Sarah Taylor uses that color a lot, but she's always, always asking me for my rubellite and my dark browns, and then of course, Pineapple Crush, one of her favorite colors. Uh, I am going to work on a violet indigo. Yeah, you love the Payne's Gray, good. Well, we're, we're gonna make you a pretty Payne's Gray. I'm gonna try to make a violet indigo. Uh, well, not try, I've already started working on it, but um, there's indigo blue, I have an indigo teal, I want an indigo violet. And uh, uh, we do need an indigo teal for this particular line. We already did one for Vivid Intense, so I'm toying around with the word, having a name River Rock something, River Rock teal, River, River Rock blue, River Rock something is bulleting around my head for the name for the uh, teal indigo color. So with so many of the other colors really super dark and rich filling in the holes, I felt it would be fun, especially the day before Easter, to play with all the really fun uh, pastel-y spring colors. How you doing, darling? Medina's here. Uh, okay, so what are we gonna do first? Let's... Look at the pieces we did yesterday. Okay, see if you can get it under the light. Yeah, indigo violets are gonna be beautiful, especially with your Payne's gray and indigo, indigo turquoise. But you gotta counteract it, give it a little compliment with these bright springy colors too. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see what we got. Uh, I've just covered this up so I'd have it because it's still wet with paint from last night. So this is the first piece. No, our red oxide is twice as expensive as most red oxides because there's lots of transparency. With my colors, you'll get opaque if you keep adding more color, but it'll stay transparent. And I can show you definitely how that works next week when I have some of them mixed up. So I am loving what happened with all the interference in this thing. And uh, I know, I mean, the centers of these little cells some of them have just a highlight point from the white beneath. And those of you guys that are new that joined us today or didn't see me do this yesterday, I basically took my colors and like wrapped them all around with the interference. So when I spun out the entire board, you can see it from edge to edge, like here's your interference gold, interference gold. Here's that blue I slipped in there and it's given that crazy little blue cast you can see that every edge of this piece is laced with interference in between those patterns. None of it got lost. I'm loving this particular style. 
Uh, yeah, I'm going to do it with other things, but right now, I'll be honest. Oh, by the way, and the white paint may feel like it's lost, but that's that interesting little highlight in the center where it lifts up, looks a little bit lighter, but then when you turn it, you see it shifts to violet right there. It really did turn out. I really, really, really love this one, but I've got to do a couple more now. I wanted to send one of these to Fairy Art Mother, and then D. Lee calls or contacts me. I don't, she emailed me and she said, I want to buy one. Well, now I'm like, oop, how do I even, I mean, I hate to admit it, but I haven't very, sold very much. Now this is, I haven't sold very much off my channel. As a matter of fact, I've never sold a piece off my channel. I've never even offered. Okay, this still is a little wet, so I've got to be really careful. As you see the colors, you can see those gazillions. Why don't you use interference red? I do. I'll use some today. I happen to love, I don't know what it is about the violet and the gold because they complement each other. So this still, you can see a lot of sparkle on the top, the diamond sparkle on the top. And it's this is still wet, so I can't touch it. But it's giving the, the blue went into this one little section. I was trying to tell Fairy Art Mother about this yesterday, and it almost created a scarab beetle effect there. I'm loving what that blue is doing, mixing with the violet and the gold. I mean, I can put some red in there. You know what I'll do, Fairy Art Mother? I'm going to put a lot of interference red and sparkle red in my, my uh, autumn leaf today. And I love that even all the little edges got covered now. They're very subtle, but every single one of these little edges had a pattern. And when it resins up, hopefully we'll get those little cells that come back. But this turned out really lovely. I'm, I'm getting more confident. It's been years since I've been able to do any kind of need to create this look, a whole wall. Yeah. I, I'll be honest, now I can't point my camera right now. I know, isn't that funny how, what that blue does, John? Um, I actually have a giant swipe on my wall. I have a couple of them, one that's a 30 by 40, and I've got one that's a 24 by 48. I did it about seven years ago, and they're not even, they're not even varnished. They're just stuff on my, on my wall is a raw swipe. But, uh, darn it, I'm trying to set this thing up on cups and it's not behaving and the thing's wet. So I've got to be really careful. Sorry, you can see the thing's wet because there's paint on my hands here. All right, so let's play with what we got going on today, okay? You didn't see yesterday's? What do you mean you didn't see yesterday's? I didn't see yesterday. It's beautiful. Oh, the colors? Uh, it was... It was... Uh, Tempted Tulip. I still have a little bit of that left. It was Pink Grapefruit. It was Autumn Leaf. And a color called Sweet Pea from the butterfly set. Basically, I used peaches and pinks. And, um, oh, you didn't get a chance to see the life. Peaches and pinks, and then the one brown. Today, we're going to add some blues to this. So, and a purple. But I'm still going to use my autumn leaf because I love that color. I made that pretty turquoise cell activator yesterday. So, we're going to be able to use that. I know that sweet pea is so subtle, right? All right, let's get some here, and I'm going to get some red out because Fairy Art Mother asked me to use some interference red. You know what? It sits in another little tub because there's not room in my main tub, Judy, and I have a tendency to ignore it. You are right. Bad, bad girl on my part. I should never ignore any of my bling it. Don't ignore the bling it. Not when we need a lot of sparkle, right? Bling, bling. So if I'm going to do possibly three pieces, I have enough stuff here to do three pieces. I'm going to make up quite a bit of this stuff. And uh, meanwhile, I hope y'all's enjoying your Easter. And uh, oh, I do need four. I'm going to have a fourth cup for that red. 
And if you've got, I know we talked about this yesterday. I, uh, I really miss, uh, I don't know. As you get older, and I don't have any family anymore, you just kind of miss those little things like sitting around the table, you know, coloring Easter eggs with the that food coloring stuff in vinegar and that little ring that you hold the egg in, right? Okay, so there's some interference gold and sparkle gold. Now, what did I mean by interference and sparkle? I'm going to show you guys again. I do this every video. Uh, pixie dust freesia. You know, it's funny you should say that. I happen to have a jar of freesia here. And I can use purple with the uh, autumn leaf. It can be done. So anyway, every video I try to go through and show you the difference between an interference and a sparkle because there's always someone new. So when your mineral says interference fine, you see how fine that is? This is that the fine are the ones that give you the strongest shift, okay? Then if we go to a sparkle blue, right, it's a slightly bigger particulate. It's not glitter. That's the mineral that's making it sparkle for you. And then you have the diamond, which is even a larger particulate. So we offer them in three sizes. Sometimes I'll just use interference diamond. And I don't use the one in the middle, right? Because look at that. that. Now that really does look like glitter. That's crazy sparkly. Or you can get real creative and do, let's say, interference blue with sparkle green. Or in the case of the gold, I really do love doing uh, an interference gold with sparkle violet. And since I've already added sparkle gold, if I could add some diamond violet to this, See, you can add different colors together. So I'm adding diamond to the, the, the violet to the gold. Why not? Make it interesting. The blue, I'm really loving that shift of that blue. And I may, again, I know I'm making a lot because we cut several boards to cover and I don't want to run out. And there's the sparkle blue. Okay, so we've handled the Interference blue, sparkle blue. Let's make sure this red gets in here. Fairy Art Mother made a request to use the interference red and the sparkle red. This is all bling it, pure mineral line. Not all minerals are mica anymore, just so everybody knows, a little bit of education. All right, so that's the interference red. And and much difference, here's a little, so you can see the difference. There's that interference blue on my hand. Here's that red. It's kind of a goldy red, a rustic red, but it's the interference red. And then sparkle red. I just like what it does covering my entire board. I love the cells hugging all that interference. It is absolutely gorgeous. Actually, because I'm using turquoise in here, I could have gotten away with a green. Maybe I should do all five. Why not? Let's just show all five, everybody. After all, it's my Saturday morning. We're playing before Easter. Ooh, I had the wrong cap on. This is the sparkle. <sighs> well, maybe I didn't have the wrong cap on. Get quite a bit of this. This is your eighth teaspoons you're seeing me pile in here. If anybody's trying to keep track of the quantity. Yeah, because the green actually would look really interesting next to the turquoise. And the red is going to look pretty hot next to any of the purples. And just so you can see the green... I'm running out of space on my glove here. Interference green, which is different than the blue, which is different than that red. And so what it does is it shifts it on that piece I did with the kiwi and the violet. It looks green on top when you look at it, but as soon as I turn that canvas, 
it completely shifted to violet. I created like an, a chameleon effect without even any chameleon mica. Yes, it was a happy accident. No, I didn't do it on purpose. I wished I had known to do it on purpose. However, okay, I am able now to remember exactly what I did and use that again next time. And part of it is the fact that I covered my entire board with the interference before I did. I went on with my swipe. Okay, a little bit of varnish in each one of the cups. Give them a nice squirt. Diamond dust. Yeah, it's a mix. Diamond dust is a mix of, was it red, gold, and green? Actually, I don't really have enough. It's not really wet. It's making a paste. And I'm getting low on my Josonia varnish. At least in this bottle. I have some triple thick next to me. I don't really want to have to open up that can, but I will if I have to. Okay. I'm going to try to mix these fast because we got a lot of boards to do today. And I want to fool around with the new springy colors. This is the blue on blue. This is the red. Hey, Janelle. How you doing, sweetheart? Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, so Milky Way, Milky Way, okay, how do I explain it? We have a color called abalone shell, and it's all the diamonds mixed together. It creates an abalone. Milky Way is 50% of these three different type of white micas that we have. They're really, really gorgeous, but it's mixed 50-50 with the abalone shell because if you use just pure mica, it sits on the surface like a big old mirror and, and uh, kind of masks the color beneath it. So by putting the abalone shell in that milky way, you get a little bit, a little bit of opacity, but you also get a lot of pop and sparkle. And the abalone shell allows some light to pass through. So it's, they play against each other. And that's the beautiful thing about the Milky Way. Shooting Star and Milky Way are basically the same. One has the wetting agent that we use for uh, the resin art. The other one does not. I love the Avalon shell. Ah, and as a matter of fact, you guys need to see me use that. I have no, not on my table here. I need a stick to mix up my base. This is one part heavy gel medium, four to five parts of vivid enamel. I've made kind of a paint base in the vivid enamel by adding a little bit of gel medium. It's turned my enamel into an actually a paint base. There's something there to hold the, uh, the form. So I'm going to put some of this in each one of the cups. Then we got our interferences mixed up. Bling it is it. It's the go-to for everything. You want to lighten the color? Don't add white. That'll take all that sparkle out. And actually, uh, you know, that brings up a subject. So many people, I'm going to try to mix and talk at the same time because I have a tendency to want to make a point by looking at you guys in the camera. Okay, so if you'll just hear me out. So many people, they'll have a blue, right? And they want to lighten that blue. And what do they do? They'll add a little bit of white and go, well, no, that's not the right color. Let me add some more white. Let me add some more white. Next thing you know, you got a bottle of half of a light blue and you only needed a little of, right? Well, think of it in reverse. Had you taken a little white and added a drop of blue, a drop of blue, a drop of blue, then you would have gotten to the color concentration that you were looking for. So think of that in that method, but using the interferences. So if I had a really dark purple that I liked, I love this color, but I want a lighter shade. I could mix up some interference violet in the cup, add this in just a grain or two, and make my own pastel purple. Kind of like the dragonfly wing colors. 
kind of like how this freesia is made. This is almost all interference with just a drop of color mixed in it. Of course, you're not really going to see it on my glove, but there's the freesia on my glove. So it's kind of like you're making your own dragonfly wing, but you start with the base of the interference first and then add a few grains of color at a time till you get the color saturation that you want. But the interferences are in a necessary tool in your toolkit for lightening and customizing colors. It, they just are. Okay, I think I've got all these mixed. Yeah, my green, here's that interference green. I wanna get rolling here because I know a lot of people are having company coming in from out of town. Some people are cooking. Okay, so I'm gonna get these over here out of the way. Get my five interferences here. All right, colors. Now, I do want to make more of this autumn leaf. I'm also going to make more of, I don't know if I'm going to do fennel flower. I was going to add more fennel flower, but I think if I'm going to add one of this color would be pretty in there, but our cell activator's that color. This color might be gorgeous. And I can use this just to intensify my mermaid scales. We know the pink will be pretty with this, but I don't want to make a rainbow. So I kind of have to decide, am I going to go? My first choice this morning was just the mermaid scales, the snapdragon, and some gold with the autumn leaf. Keep it simple like I did yesterday. As a matter of fact, this actually adds a third color. And yesterday I stuck with... Uh, a whole monochromatic theme of the peaches and pink and then a pop of the autumn leaf, okay? Uh, so here's where I'm going with this. I'm gonna, we'll sh we'll, we should look at these on paper just so we can play with them, you know, so that you can see them. But I think for the actual color mixing, I'm gonna stick to something really simple because not doing a rainbow effect is kind of working for me. They're looking... The pieces are looking more elegant that way. So let's make up some more autumn leaf. And uh, I know this tub's already got some in it. Just a little bit more. Uh, I'm gonna use some of the sparkle red. Give it a little something, 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 an extra little punch. You can really see that red play in that cup of color. And then uh, some interference red. Oh, I hope I got enough varnish. I may be busting open this can of. Let's hope not. Let's, let's use what we got. I'm worried because I know the trick to this, why the consistency is working so much, is I'm adding enough varnish to my mix. When the first few videos I did where the color wasn't holding up really well, I didn't have enough varnish in there for the cell activator react. So I'm making sure it's almost a 50%, almost 50-50 varnish and my gel medium paint mix, Vivid Enamel mix. And, you know, I, for a while, I kind of didn't get it. People would call, and they're terrified to change their consistencies, their recipes. Well, now I suddenly get it. I found something that works. I was talking to John about this yesterday. I don't want to mess with it. <laughs> if it works, don't change it. So there's that autumn leaf with a little extra bit of our sparkle and interference gold. Okay, and let's mix up. I really want to see this color mixed. I'm dying to see this. I literally just put it off my, took it off my table and brought it to you guys. You want to get more? Okay. 
The diamond dust was a bonus that we made and it was a custom mix that we made for you guys. So I can talk to the lab about putting it up on the website again. I mean, we can ask them about that. Let's make something with this pale pear. I don't even know what we're going to call it. But it's going to be like a periwinkle blue. My instinct is to add blue to it. Micah, I'm going to go one, two. There's quite a few drops in there. Probably about five or six drops. I didn't mean to put that much in there. Let's add some. Ooh. Let's add some of the glass wing butterfly set color. This is a color called angel wings. It's a mineral that's got a blue coating on it. It's going to look grayish, but that's the mineral. This is not a mica. This is a different kind of mineral. I like it because it's really brilliant when it's mixed with the colors. You can tell how pretty this stuff is. It's got a gray tone, but don't worry about it. The gray part is transparent. It won't conflict with what you're trying to do. Then let's add a little bit of interference. Who asked something? Thanks. I use a lot of in resin. Yeah. Okay, so Karen, you wet them with what? Yeah. So who asked about it? Was it Sparkle that asked? Okay, so Sparkle, primary elements. You want to get them in the resin? You can. One part vivid art fluid. This is an acrylic emulsion that's got no thicker in it. Sounds like skim milk, right? It's real liquidy. So you only need one part this, two parts pigment. Dissolve the color, because remember, primary elements is a dry paint. You gotta dissolve that color. Mix it into a paste and then beat it right into your resin. You don't need very much of this in the mix. And it makes your primary elements gorgeous in resin. Gorgeous. Here's some of that interference violet. I'm gonna put it in this pretty periwinkle blue color. I already have a color called Pretty Periwinkle, so I can't use that, sorry. And let's add a little varnish to this. Let's see what our new pale lavender looks like or whatever we're gonna end up naming this. And I literally go on the internet and start looking for flowers and seeds and gemstones and that's where all the names come from. Now, this has to have a white in it. It doesn't have titanium but there is an aqueous white in this. So your sparkle's not gonna show up quite as much as it will in this color because there's a little white in there to get it to that gorgeous, gorgeous tone. But uh, that's the thing you give up. You want the lighter values. We gotta add a little something, something in there to get that color up, to lift it up and get it to that light shade of periwinkle. I can see a little bit of that interference and a little bit of the angel wings blue in there. I could add more if I want to. I think I put way too much color. If you saw all the drops I put in there, I mean, I really, really, really should just, I know I'm kicking myself in the butt that I didn't just use one drop because it's kind of defeating the purpose. It's hard for you to see the shimmer in this thing because I used probably about six drops in here and one would give me more transparency. Now I could actually turn this in and make about four ounces of paint, but I don't want to waste the varnish. I don't want to waste your time while I'm doing this. But the next color, I will only do one drop so you can see where I can talk about what I'm talking about here. One single drop. Now you can do a tap drop, you've literally tapped it, or you could do a full drop out of the, what you call it, that's about a good drop, okay? Add some varnish. Then this one, I'm gonna go with some green. I think a little bit of interference green would be really pretty because we're leaning towards the aquamarine anyway, right? It is an aquamarine color. 
but using less of the purely pigments, look at that color. We just made our own mermaid scales. And definitely that shimmer shows. So you can see what I was talking about. I put way too much of that pale lavender in here for the mica to show. And if I want to add more color, I can. But I'm in a situation here where I can't take the color away. I can always add more, but I can't take it away. Like I said, I went a little overboard on that light periwinkle color. But this is the aqua. I think I already have an aquamarine. Oh, my God. Look at how pretty that is. Aha! That's one single drop of this, tea, this turquoise. A good hefty scoop of the interference green. Now it's a little light. I think it's even lighter than how the mermaid scales is gonna turn out. So I can now purposely say, I want one more, <laughs> one more drop. There's our drop. And there we go. Now the colors are super powerful. Okay, so look at what that did. Two drops and I just made the most gorgeous, gorgeous turquoise with interference green. All right, well, while we're on the, while we're on the roll, <laughs> I might as well mix them all, somehow figure out how to use them on my boards because we've already got two of them now. We might as well do the other two. Someone said they really like this blue. And I know that if Princess Jasmina comes on here, she's gonna go, there's pink. There's actually pink I can use. So I have to get more cups. Need more cups. I'm going a little crazy with all that interference stuff that I'm playing with. To me, at the interference is like, you know, it's like, I don't know, water and sunshine to paint. It's, it, it, it's the lifeblood of everything we make. And because the interference allows 99% of the light to go through it, you can see the black underneath my glove before you see the sparkle of that color coming back. And so interference is everything all three particulate sizes. It's a special coating that interferes with the light and changes the way you see the color. All right, so let's do our blue J blue or blue bonnet. I think we have a color called blue bonnet, Judy. We put blue bonnet in the prism pour line. So again, one drop of the blue. Let's, let's see. You know, for the fun of it, we can do a Papillon effect, but first I'm gonna show you what the blue looks like by itself. When I say Papillon, instead of adding just blue on blue, like interference blue to the blue, I just want you to see the blue, the actual color of the blue mixed in the cup with the varnish. So you see what you're looking at first. Then if we add um, interference violet, it's going to completely shift from the color that you see because it interferes with the light. Look at that in the cup. You can already start to see what that interference is doing as it's playing around in the cup. You see that? That's what it's gonna do. So it's gonna change the way you see the color. It interferes with the light and changes that color. That looks like our Papillon in the Dragonfly Wing set. Look at that color.
And we're gonna add a little bit of the acrylic to this. Turn it into a paint. Look at that. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. Bunny said she doesn't want us to run out. She's going to order, run out and make something right now. Well, don't leave the live, though. Make sure you see what we're doing here. Now, if I wanted to intensify this color one more time, I could, but I kind of like how light that one is. I'm going to leave it that value. Now, there was one other color besides this pink I'm going to do. One other color I actually wanted to make. Since we've only already made our own version of mermaid scales, I don't need to make our mermaid scales. I did want to put a snapdragon in there, but you know what? I'm going to go with the freesia because we're going with all these pretty pastels. Let's make the freesia up and then this pink. And we'll see if it even goes well with the autumn leaf. We may just change everything and do a gorgeous pastel swipe today in honor of Easter. So that's the one thing is I'm on my table here and I can change my mind. <laughs> it doesn't have to look like yesterday's swipe. It could look like a big Easter egg. Okay, so here's what this really pretty pink looks like. Which set? They asking about a specific set. Yeah, 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 this set's gonna be amazing, you guys, especially with the indigo violet and everything on it. And remember, if you're an Art of Color Club member, you know what, Bunny, if you decided you could buy a club card and then go back in and buy the set because we're not gonna be, sh we have to put them in production. I will finish the cards tonight and tomorrow and we're closed on Monday due to Easter. So it's up to you. Appreciate the business no matter which way you go, but founding members, which the membership drive goes till April 5th. So even if you bought your set today, you could do that. You can get your set today, but then you become a founding member. Anybody who's a founding member is going to get a second pre-order event gift. So I'm stirring this pink so you can see how gorgeous this thing is. Yeah, I mean, this is only one drop in that, in that varnish. Now... Uh, blue would make it very interesting, okay? I am going to play it straight, though, but I'm going to add... No, I think I'm going to go violet on violet on violet. Let's go violet, violet, violet all the way. So this really has a lot of... God, look, and you see this color on my, on my thing here? I got to show you this on, my, on a piece of paper. Look at how beautiful this color is. Oh my God, I'm loving that pink. And this is just one drop in that varnish. I mean, we know how flip and concentrated this stuff is. Okay, so there's some, oh, there's some sparkle interference in that pink. Yowza. You know what? Instead of adding interference, let's, let's take a little, let's take a little risk here and i'm just going to put the sparkle and the diamond in it the two largest ones in here and make this a really pretty sparkly sparkly color might need a little more pink by the time i'm done with it but i'm liking where we're going with this Get my container here i have this little container that i put all these in so you guys have never seen this. This is always on my set, set up, so I can get everything put away. I got these at the dollar store. I love these little things. They're great for putting everything in. The tip to my mini blower. <laughs> All right, so we get these off the table. I can always grab them if I need them again. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to moving. I'll be able to have a bigger setup than on this tiny little table here where we're making all this wonderful magic happen. What's attached to my blue streak or blue ribbon? Blue ribbon's not a bad name. Uh, yeah, when you get, you won't get a physical card, but we will email you a gift card that is assigned to your email address. You will get instructions to create, make sure you have an account if you haven't already created one. I will create the card for the full 500 or whatever the amount is. If you use only half of it, you're instructed to text me or message me. I will fix the card. Moving forward, we're installing a software that's going to manage all of this for us. But I'm manually taking care of the founding members and making sure no one but you can use that card. Because we're giving away a lot of perks in this. Okay, so remember, this one only has the sparkle and the diamond in it. Boy, is that a bubblegum pink or what? Where is Princess Jasmine when you need her? Now, this is really, really, really light. Wow, look at that. That is crazy. I'm trying to get this on camera instead, so it's like almost in my lap. I want to make sure you guys see the sparkle on this thing. Look how gorgeous this pink is. I really, I don't know, I, I didn't add an extra drop to this, but I think I'm going to add one more drop just so it shows up. Yeah, I don't want a bubble. <laughs> I want an actual drop. There we go. We got one drop. Shimmer, shimmer, shimmer. Barbalicious, you know. This really is, Barbalicious is a great name for this color. I got to admit. Now look at that. One more drop. It went to a completely different shade of that gorgeous pink. All right. Well, we got some colors here to use. Hopefully you got enough for, I don't know if we'll be able to pull off all three boards, but I know we'll be able to pull off two. Uh, I am going to use this as part of my cell activator plan. A little bit of this. This is a custom cell activator made with Amsterdam titanium white cell activator and a little one drop of Vibrant Aqua in here. I made it yesterday and we ended up not using that color. I decided that white, white cell activator would make my piece more elegant. I'm trying to restrain myself. Let me say this on camera. I'm trying to restrain myself from always ending up with a rainbow. And even right now with all these Easter egg colors, there's a little bit of a rainbow thing going on, but they're really, really, really... Yeah, that second drop made a difference. So I'll take all your names in consideration. Here is four of the 11... Believe me, I'm already, there's more than 11 colors I can make. I started going crazy last night thinking about these. So anyway, let me get these on the back. I'm running out of room on my front table here. I am, I promised I'd make up the freesia instead of, it's the same color as my vision. Well, it sure looks like Barbie pink. Definitely. And I, I wish... Uh, Pam was here, Princess Jasmina's mommy, because she, when she first emailed me, she goes, I am looking for the perfect pink, the retro pink that you see, and all of the old stuff from, and I forget what year she quoted. And I said, well, you know, you can make your own. And she got indignant going, what do you mean make my own? <laughs> of course, this is her first time reaching out to me. So she didn't want it. She didn't quite, quite get what I was saying. I said, well, you know, you can always customize and make your own color. Hat, not your eyes. Hat, it's the same. Oh, it is a hat comer as my visor. Yeah, it is. It's the exact same color as my visor. <laughs> okay. I got, boy, it's definitely Easter today, kids. Easter, Easter, Easter. We got to have a gold. And I'm going to add the freezer in there. And I'll do this as quickly as I can because I know I'm already at 64 minutes. We've been doing this an hour and I haven't even put anything out there for you to ooh and ah over yet, really, per se. Okay, so here's the freesia. 
again in the dragonfly wing set just it's mostly interference with just a touch of color and then here's some of that golden maple oops that's i thought it looked funny to me it looked funny in the jar it looked like a primer element i almost made more autumn leaf this is the golden maple and i almost put this in the cup oops oops yeah, it's golden maple we want to, it's golden maple that we want to make. We want some nice gold to drizzle all over this. This I'm going to make plenty of. We don't run out. I can always save it if I have anything left over. And add a little varnish to my freesia, add a little varnish to my golden maple. And this, it's a slightly larger particulate gold. I like to mix it with a fine gold we have called red gold. But this really worked well in my cells yesterday. I loved how it just kind of, it, it, it formed underneath it, became part of them or just outlined them. And this is that freesia. Looks like it needs a little more color to it, in my humble opinion. Now, if I wanted to dress that up a bit, that's a risk though. I don't know if I've got, well, I could try using the, you see that doesn't have a lot of color in it. Once you mix it up, that freesia is really, really pale. You know what I'm gonna do? I have a little Snapdragon here. This is another thing you guys can always do. Don't think about not mixing your other colors in. I have a little Snapdragon because I want the perfect purple. I'm worried if I grab the purely pigments, I might ruin this thing because I, I, on the fly, I've not mixed the freesia with anything. So I'm gonna take a 30 seconds of a teaspoon and just put a little bit of the Snapdragon in it. It's not completely full. Dump that in. I bet you that's gonna give me enough color to just dress up this freesia. There we go. Now we've got a fantastic Easter egg violet. Look at that. Love that. Yeah, but look what the Snapdragon did. That It's still not completely dissolved. You can see the color molecules breaking down, and it just gets darker and darker and darker by adding a tiny bit of that Snapdragon in there. If anybody ever questions that, primary elements is just a mica powder. Honey, it ain't. It's a dry paint system with lots of color. And look at all those beads of Snapdragon still breaking down in there. Pretty, pretty color. All right. And now we've got our fabulous gold, golden maple. I ran out of that yesterday, so I don't want to run out. Last, the worst thing in the, that can happen, you're on camera and all of a sudden you don't have enough of something that you want. I'd rather have extra. I can always store it for next time. So there's a little more in there, just a little squeeze of the varnish that reacts to our cell activator. Again, I'm really questioning whether I even wanna put the autumn leaf in there. <laughs> Yo, I'm always changing my mind. Once I get this stuff mixed up, it's like yesterday, I felt if I had put this in with uh, this piece, it wouldn't have looked as elegant if I had used this. What did you say? There's nothing like watching someone who's actually, oh, well, good. Yeah, at least I, I'm good for something, right? <laughs> Teach you how to customize your colors. Okay, let's get this, these paper towels off. It was really wet here. You can tell there was, there was still paint on this thing and I wanted, I needed a place to put my jars of all the, the bling it there. I still have a piece of tape from yesterday, kind of guiding where 
at least I know one end and one end up there has to go. And lucky us, it just so happens. I'm not so sure about this canvas. This company I'm not real comfortable with. It's not the same one. Wow, it's not even, I thought this was the same size. It's not. All right, let's try something different. Or not. I guess I could do a little test. This is actually Easter egg shaped, right? I'm just deciding if I want to do something this small. <laughs> okay, I don't even, that's not really going to give us a good center because the tape's not going to work from yesterday. This is the test. This is the first one. It'll be a test. We're going to get to see how these colors react. And then if we like them, I'll put them on my big canvas canvas. I've got right here, Canvexo canvas. All right, let's get that camera up where you guys can all see. Give me a second, I gotta raise the camera up, guys. Color gets you jazzed, well that's awesome, girl. Color gets me really jazzed. Yeah, this is a small board. It's gonna be interesting trying to even reach in to do this. I'm trying to stand and do this, guys. So, bear with me. Let's just hope Harley doesn't jump up on the table now. Now that we're all exposed. Okay, so I've got, this is bare satin enamel white. This is not the bear that you buy right off the shelf. The blue and green can that has a primer, a blue and white can that has a primer in it. This is the red and white can. This is the stuff that they actually tint in the paint department. It has no primer, fast drying agents, and this is why I prefer to use this with our coloring system, regular house paint has primers and fast drying agents and it really, 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 really messes with the color. It, the fast drying agent draws moisture from the air and in the case of house regular, like cheap eggshell white house paint, it draws all the color down into the paint. And the primer is not much better. Okay, so we got a nice little even amount of paint on here. Looks pretty even paint goes where it's been before as they always say I may regret not I have a 12 by 12 here but it is a square we'll see how this works so I'm going to just spin this just a little bit so it pulls out that center paint a bit more because I'm not really doing a bloom in the middle I don't need to have a big pile in the middle Kind of silly of me to do that, but I do want to make sure the paint is evenly distributed and there's plenty of it. All right, so again, I'm on the fence on the autumn leaf. If it feels like it's going to fit in here some well, I will. Because this is more opaque, even though I can see some of the interference in here, even with all of that color in there, you can still see that interference, right? Kind of makes me happy. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of pour, start up a little bit higher this time. Use our Bubblicious. <laughs> I think that's a great name, Bubblicious. Bubblific, bubble, bubble, bubble terrific. Ooh, I forgot to use my interferences in between. So here is interference red in between our pink. And then I'm gonna use some interference gold. Mm. 
Look at that. Wow. That is so pretty. Now, I find that I have more control pouring than dribbling with a stick. That's me right now just trying to stand and do this. I don't know if you guys all know I had knee replacement surgery, and I'm doing pretty well actually standing, considering. Here is that beautiful turquoise we just made with two drops in the interference green. This is out of that new purely pigment set. Yeah, if, any, if anybody questions whether this is an Easter swipe, <laughs> I think so. This is definitely all about Easter. And I'm going to put some interference green right here. And a tiny bit more of that pretty, pretty turquoise here. And then we have this, our own Papillon Blue. Look at that. This is just crazy. Hey, red gold is red gold, right? Okay, so I have one, two, three interferences here. I've used the green. I have not used the blue yet. I think this is that blue. Yep, this is an interference blue. I'm so this is such a small canvas. I'm trying to make sure I don't go nuts over here. And then the only color I didn't use was violet. I'll dribble a little violet in here just for the fun of it. Oh, hello. And our custom beautiful color we made. This is that freesia, right? I almost forgot the freesia. All right. Now, this I'm not going to put on my knife. I'm going to do what I did last time. I drizzled it because it really took over. So I'm going to do this is cell activator. All right, now I gotta sit down, guys. Bear with me just a second. I gotta get these little tubs out of my way or I'm gonna hit them as I'm trying to do this spin. I have this OCD thing about keeping my table as tidy as possible before I get going in case mistakes happen. I think that's a lab thing. Made too many mistakes in the lab uh, hitting things. All right, now let's get some cell activator on our knife. See this? weird how this turntable is. You can't even see me working on my knife here. I've got a little spin. I've, this is inside of a jar. I think this was a mason jar. And I just had the cell activator already mixed up in my jar. And it has a spoon right here. Tap my excess off. Oh, she's at the ski cabin. How you doing, Sandy? Wow, that's kind of interesting. I'm liking, I'm loving how that blade, that little bit of color that picked on my blades picking up. I still have to catch that center part. So a little more cell activator here. It just kind of had an odd shape to it. Let's see what happens there. 
You can tell I'm getting used to doing these. I'm getting a little more confident and I'm not second guessing myself before I do that spin. Oh, yes, Sandy. We are playing with four of the new colors. How did you know? They are not quite named yet, but yes. Can you see these yet? We've got an aqua, a bright blue, a pretty periwinkle. This mixes up like that whole blind light blue, that periwinkle color, and a beautiful pink, yes. These are teasers. <laughs> so, yes ma'am, I mix them up on camera so everybody has a chance to play, look at me play with these things. Okay, let's get a little heat on this. Look at the bubblicious. It's creating some kind of pink, crazy pink cell there in the middle. There's my torch. Let's give this puppy a spin. Okay, so what's happening here? Now, it is rather pale. And now I'm deciding, I don't want this part to spin off. I really don't want this to spin off. So if I'm doing the right rule of thumb, <laughs> am I supposed to put it on that end so the paint goes off that edge? I said, this is a strange little canvas. It was like half the size of what I thought it was until I just opened it up. I think I may actually tilt this because I am loving what's happening right here. This color combination right here on the edge, this purple right here is gorgeous. But the... Uh, I don't know. I mean, I can see all the colors on this thing. They're pretty light. This part right here is really going to have to open up where all that white is. So the question is, is do I re-swipe it? I don't know. There's some parts that I really like about it and parts that I don't. But this was like the test. Remember I said this is our test swipe. So I gotta find a place to put this. Give me a minute. Get something situated for him. And then I rethink about what colors I'm gonna use. I like what that color did. I like what the pink did. I think that uh, bubblicious pink is absolutely gorgeous. I don't know what you guys' thoughts are. This should open up, but it's not opening up that fast. Maybe we do need uh, something like an autumn leaf or darker color to kind of break that up. I am liking what I'm seeing, that, that pink is sparkling like diamonds, and I'm liking this section right here. So we'll see. I'm going to set this aside. Let's get to our main piece, the big one. Now I'm rethinking what I'm going to do. I might. Th oh, I know what I didn't put in there. The gold. Hello. That's what it's missing. There's nothing there to break up those colors, right? They're all pastel, pastel, pastel. No gold, no autumn leaf, no nothing. I think this looks pretty centered here. It has going just a little bit more. Let's get some white on this. 
Oh, darn it. I missed the gold. I was in such a hurry to spin the darn thing. I was too excited to show you guys the new purely pigment colors. We'll blame it on that, right? I was determined <laughs> to show you those. I think I need more of the higher, like that pink and that uh, that violet that we made with a little bit of snap dragon. We need something with a little bit higher value. I'm making sure all the edges of this thing is really saturated along the sides. And I can pick up some of this paint and keep reusing it. Because it's important that the paint that runs over the sides completely runs over the sides. I kept spinning and spinning yesterday trying to get that paint to go over the side. And I, I probably use the right amount of paint because it just came out with a perfect amount. It finished. I kept spinning after I got off camera with you guys trying to get all the edges covered. And the trick is to make sure all, because paint goes where paint has already been. That's what, you hear all the resin people say that. It goes where it's already been. It's going to travel where there's already a wet path to get to it. Right. Get a little bit more white on top. Now, this is the fun stuff that happens in lives that, you know, when you get on camera and you see somebody who's already starting a project, they've already got the white down on their canvas, right? They've already done this part, usually. And, you know, I feel, I mean, I'm on YouTube too, but all the YouTube artists that are doing long-form videos struggle with just how long to make the video, what content to show you, should they show you color mixing. It's not as easy as you guys think to figure out how to do the algorithms, do a video and get subscribers. Okay, now we've got a really nice, good size canvas here. I am going to be way more generous with this color. Oh, you guys can't see the colors. I'm gonna just make sure the two brightest colors that showed up, including this are in there. I might drizzle a tiny bit of the autumn leaf just for a break, but I'm not gonna do a big piece where the whole thing looks like it's brown. So I'm gonna start with, uh, this is that Canvex, Convexo canvas. It's called Convexo. Oh, when they talk on their own YouTube channel. Okay, so we're just going to, now we're, because I'm not going to do a third canvas, this is going to have all the paint on it. I'm going to do a generous amount. This is that color that had the purely pigment pale lavender in it. Uh, and I, did, I thought I put too much in there so the mica wouldn't show up, but look at the bottom of the cup. It's here. Oh yeah, editing. <sighs> who likes editing? Actually, I know someone who loves editing. I think they're a sick puppy. <laughs> but they love editing. Okay, so let's uh, go right down the line with these interferences because I'm going to put it in between each color. We want to have plenty of interference on the board. Then I'm going to go with the pink, and I'm going to make sure there's plenty of our bubblicious Barbie pink in here. I'm not going to scrimp on that color because it really showed up pretty in our piece. Okay, so I've done the gold. Let's see, next to the pink, I'm going to put some interference green. Next to the custom, ooh, wait a minute, let's get this turquoise in here. This custom turquoise that we made, this was made out of the purely pigment, two drops, and some interference green. This is the interference violet. 
Now, last time I remembered to drizzle in between. We are going to drizzle with gold. Make sure there's plenty of gold drizzled. Actually, my gold doesn't look sparkly enough. I think what I did on my gold yesterday, I added one drop of the Aztec yellow. And a lot of people don't know this, but that decor gold actually has color in it. It's not just mica. So I'm putting one drop. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean to do that. No. Uh-oh. Let me get a spoon. Emergency, emergency. I was only going to put one drop in. There we go. Wow. Well, that really made a bright gold. And look how much I took out. Oh, well, I'm going to live with that because that's going to make, this is going to break this up. It's going to get me plenty of pop in between each one of these. And then I don't think I need to use the autumn leaf in this thing. I'll get away with just the colors that we have. Okay, so what color I've not put in there? We haven't used our custom Papillon color. And uh, I think I'm gonna use the rest of this, that teal that we use. I might as well use the rest of these paints up in the cup. I do like, oh, the one I didn't use out of all, I was determined I was gonna have that dark color in here. So this is that darker violet that we made, because this is really light. I'm gonna take out a little bit more of the darker violet, lay it here. Now we're gonna have some pops of color here that we didn't have before. Let's take some of this Barbie pink, what's left. Put a little drizzle of that in here. Yes, I'm getting braver and braver and braver. All right, let's see what else is missing. We did not use the red. Fairy Art Mother asked me to use interference red. Here's our interference red. I think it kind of looked nice in here and around everything. The goal, I know it looks like a lot of paint, but the goal is to end up with basically the whole board looking like it's covered with interference and in cells. Okay, I'm gonna use the rest of this Papillon bluish color. And then add just another more drizzle of the gold, even though that is really an interesting gold. There's way too much Aztec yellow in there. And you see, I still have the spoon I pulled out I tried to take as much out as I could. All right. Well, let's, uh, Harley, you need to get out of my chair. He, when I stand and do this, he thinks the chair is for him. Go on, buddy. Go, go, go. Go on. Go on, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. All right. I gotta sit down to do this. I can't stand and do that. So just making sure what, level, what little bit of paint I got left. I'm not gonna throw this away. Same thing with my Bubblicious Barbie Pink. And I still have some more of that violet. And then we're gonna take the turquoise cell activator like we did last time. Do a little drizzle of it here. I'm actually gonna do a starting line of the cell activator because this didn't show up in that last swipe very much. So I'm gonna start with a starting line of the cell activator 
right over this periwinkle color. We'll see how the grand experiment goes today. And then put some white cell activator out. I know, I'm OCD. Okay, now can you see all this paint that's, that's loaded up here? I'm actually gonna take this paint that's already drizzling off and put it right back on the canvas. I'm not gonna waste it, not all that beautiful interference color that's on there. It's already gonna spin off, so I don't need to like help it spin off even more. All right, get some white cell activator on the back of our blade. I know it's a little off camera, guys. I have some in the jar and I'm just tapping off the excess. So you can see me tap off the excess. So the blade just has an even amount of paint on it. And we'll see how this goes. Wow, look at that. It's making a green. Where did that pop up from? Where'd that green come from? I bet you it's because I used the Aztec yellow in that gold. Okay. And then I'm just going to go right over here and just keep spinning. Yeah, okay, so the Aztec Gold gave us a green. That's really interesting, guys. I'm gonna do a little isolate swipe here. Yeah, way too much yellow in that gold. I'm gonna do a little isolate swipe right here, put some paint right on the back of this blade. And just run it right there. Looks like I got another little area here that needs a little cell activator. I got my little itty bitty blade here. There we go. <laughs> Definitely Easter, 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 Easter. Okay, so I already know that, wow, look at all that paint here that did not get swiped. What do I do there? Is this a dilemma that any of you guys have ever experienced? What do I do? Can I just swipe this section? Here we go, I got a little cells and swipe it again. All right. This ought to be really interesting. <laughs> this is my happy Easter spin swipe. Spin it, spin it. Everybody just wants me to spin it. Okay, I will. I'm letting the cells develop a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to get my torch out just for one second. It's a little bit puddled. There's, a, there's another puddle right here that didn't get touched by the cell activator, but I'm not gonna mess with that. I know you guys would yell at me if I did. <laughs> That's the thing about the live. You listen to the people. Here's my torch. Wake up those cells. <laughs> Already know this section. That's just white paint, I think. I don't even think that cell activator so let's see what we get. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Paint got so wet it wanted to crumple up under the spinner. Okay, there we go. It's pretty wet here. Good thing I put on an extra pair of gloves on my hand.
Corel. All right. Again, the paper crumpling up wants to prohibit us from spinning. I think I got way too much paint on this paper that fell off. So it's having a field day with me. I'm moving everything over so I can push this paper down while I spin. <laughs> push that thing down or put something heavy next to it. So it doesn't lift up when I spin it, right? All right, let's get going here. Boy, does that look like an Easter egg or what? <laughs> oh my God, you guys. Now I do, well, I actually don't mind it not having cells there. That's okay. And this part's really interesting. I'm loving what's happening right here. Oh my God, these are beautiful. But that white part over in that one corner does bug me. So I'm going to take the advice I got yesterday and push that a little bit further to the end. So when I spin, it should pull more of that white spot off. That is cell activator, I think, because I saw cells underneath it. We'll try spinning it off. And it's trying. I think that paper's sticking down now. That's weird that the paper's curling up because there was so much moisture there. That's not bad. I kind of like what it fixed that. The only thing I'm gonna do is just tilt this slightly this way. Just let gravity run that one little bit of white off. Not much, I don't wanna ruin the rest of the patterns, so. Okay, and then let's spin it again leaving that end a little bit more off center. Oh my God, can you see what's happening here? Oh, oh my goodness. You have got to see this pink, Princess Jasmine and Mama. Wait till you see the whole darn thing. What did you have to say? Oh, you like the white? Oh, cool, Sandy. I do like the section now. It's kind of softening. It was a big white spot, but as it's pulling over, there's more color popping in there. Do you? It's nuts, so look at how crazy that is. This looks like a big, giant Easter egg. And I don't know, I'm gonna try really hard this time to get the camera closer for you guys. I don't know how close I can get it. Let me get some of these wet, sloppy gloves off. Because I can't really touch the camera with paint on it. Yeah, this looks so crazy cool. I wish I had an Easter egg that color. And I want it to dry just like that. It does look sci-fi. I wish you could see all the sparkle though, because remember the entire canvas is covered with interference. And so this whole thing is sparkling with greens and violets and blues and gold. Uh, I know yesterday I got a chance to get a little peek of the small one for you guys, because I could lift it up. And this is kind of risky, but I don't know if I can lift this up and let you get a little gander at that color, like that papillon and all those purples and those crazy edges. Do you see all that sparkle happening in there? All that crazy interference in here and all those little gold specks. I'm loving this thing. I'm leaving it alone. <laughs> I'm covered with paint and yeah.
All right, let me get, uh, just let me get my hands wiped off so I can get the camera down. Interesting day. I didn't use the autumn leaf at all. I'm glad I didn't because I really wanted to showcase those four pastel colors from set number three that either there's a pre-order event on right now and um, God, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my, that pop of pink, that pink is so beautiful. That we're, we want to call it Barbalicious. I guess Prince, Princess Jasmina's mama may have a input on the, uh, yeah, that's not even a bad angle. I've got it just down so I can, I can uh, <clears throat> talk to you guys. So, all right, so the set is up there. Purator Vent, um, they usually take about two and a half weeks. Um, so anybody who orders on the pre-order and uses basically the house code that's up there, there's always a gift with the pre-order event. But we are going to add a second special gift for club members. That's what we're doing. We're doing our founding drive. Yeah, bubblegum pink. Yeah, Princess Pink. I do like the name Princess Pink. That's a great part. That pink is so stunning. Um, anyway, so the set is up there, and then all the individuals for set two I made available. Penny uh, asked a few times, and I felt really bad that it took me so long to get those up. Uh, the uh, membership drive ends next weekend. It's dated for the 5th, but sometimes the website takes another 24 to 36 hours to fall off because of international customers. So do it while you can. And we did hold it in to April for those of you that it's, it's in your budget to be able to buy your card in April and you really couldn't afford it. Um, I need to read your previous comments. Well, I will when we get off, honey, because I can read anything while I was up there other than I saw that uh, you walked away. Oh my God, this thing's changing again. I just, one more time, I don't know if we can get a gander at this thing. I'm gonna, oh, by the way, this is an apron that my crew made for me, Scrooge Onstead. <laughs> Last time I ruined my shirt, I decided I should wear my apron. But this part right there, it's this crazy blue pink thing that's popping up. I am loving that. Okay, well, I want to thank you for joining me. Um, I hope everybody has a fantastic Easter. I appreciate you guys showing up, giving me an audience to show off to and mix colors for. And, uh, well, I did. I held it over because I, I have some, I know there's some people on a budget and they don't get their money. They don't, they don't get their money till the first. So you're welcome, John. And John, uh, yesterday, John and I got on the phone. He said, now you've inspired me to try swiping and, and blooming again because he kind of gave up. Anyway, happy Easter, everybody. Love you for showing up. Thank you for being here. Hugs and kisses. See you Tuesday and happy Easter. Bye.